Hey everyone, welcome to a video on radiant energy. And to begin, I'd like to think about light, um, and in particular how it can exist in two different forms. So light can exist either as a particle, or as a wave. And so we're going to spend a lot of time with the wave part of this today. Just so you know, the particle form of light is called a photon. So you may have heard of photons and how they have a role in bio for things like photosynthesis. But what's often confusing for people about light is the fact that you can have light acting as these two different things, electron act, electrons acting as these two different things, waves and particles. And so that's called the wave-particle duality. And what I thought I'd do is show you a few examples of other things acting as two at once. So feel free to pause as we see these pictures um, and then see if you can figure out what two things are present in the pictures. So here we go. Again, you're looking for two different things and obviously feel free to pause the video at any time. This one is tricky for a lot of people, but there are two different things. Two different ages would be my hint to you. A lot going on here and here and here. Turns out a lot of different companies actually use this same technique. Uh, so you can see multiple imageries, if you will, in the logos of some famous companies. Again, see if you can find hidden symbols throughout. Just so you know, this is the symbol of an old NHL franchise called the Hartford Whalers. Hartford Whalers. So somewhere there's an H in this logo and somewhere there's a W for Hartford Whalers. Once you see the arrow in the FedEx logo, you will never unsee it. All right, so those are good examples of how we can see two things in one in many instances. Um, but let's, let's get down to talking a little bit more about light, and let's talk about energy, and let's talk about how it relates to waves. So all of that is based on this thing we call radiant energy. So light travels through the space around us, um, in a form called electromagnetic radiation, also known as EMR. Interestingly enough, this light has been, been behaved again as both waves and particles. And there are some experiments, we've seen the double slit experiment, to show that kind of both of these are true, and it's dependent on observation when you see one versus the other. Today we'll talk a little bit more about waves in particular. So we're gonna see some different attributes and characteristics of waves. We'll see these actually on a wave. So we have amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and speed. The amplitude of a wave is the height. And you'll notice if you draw a line through the middle of the wave, like we've done here, the amplitude is up or down from that spot, and it should be obviously the same height because we've gone through the middle of the wave, but we're only measuring it from middle of wave to peak or middle of wave to valley, not from peak to valley. Just so you know, the brightness or the intensity of a light depends on that attribute, the amplitude. There's also wavelength. Wavelength is denoted by this thing that looks like an upside down Y. That is the Greek letter lambda, so we'll often say lambda instead of wavelength. Wavelength is the distance between two identical spots on the wave, so it could be peak to peak, or valley to valley, or midpoint on the descending line to midpoint on the descending line. All of those are the same. That is the wavelength. And the wavelength will have units of nanometers, centimeters, or meters. It is a length, right? Um, so we'll need to convert to whatever unit we need to cancel out. Frequency, this again is a Greek letter. It looks like a V, but it's actually the Greek letter nu. Uh, so you'll often hear us talking about nu instead of frequency. This is how often waves occur at a given point. So it's basically thought of as cycles. So it has units of hertz. Hertz is cycles or one time per second, also known as inverse seconds. So basically what we're saying is how often does the wave occur per second? So let's say that we did have time on this wave. 
let's say that we measured the time and the wave went from, you know, this point to this point in one second. Well, it completed one whole cycle in a second. So the frequency of that wave would be one cycle per second, one hertz. Speed of light is denoted by C. This is the famous C and E equals MC squared. So C, or the speed of light, is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And that's the speed of light. That's the speed at which all light is traveling. If you'd like, take a second and convert that to miles per hour, and you'll think about just how darn fast that is. It's amazingly fast. And that gives rise to a formula if we combine our speed of light wavelength and frequency, and it is C equals lambda nu. So the speed of light is equal to its frequency times its wavelength. There we see it again. Okay, so how does that come into play with what we know and love and what we see on Earth? This all comes into play in something called the electromagnetic spectrum, which shows us basically all forms of light and all of these waves. Um, and on the chart that you see here, you'll notice that the wavelength is the largest over here, and the wavelength is the smallest down here on the left, and frequency is the opposite. Frequency is large over here, but small over here. So the fact that this shows wavelength getting bigger as we go to the right and frequency getting bigger as we go to the left means that those are inverse relationships. Wavelengths and frequency are inverse. And you can see that there are all these different types of electromagnetic radiation that we're accustomed to, things like radios, things like microwaves in your, in your kitchen, infrared you may have heard of, UV light, x-rays at the doctor's office, gamma rays we talked about with different types of decay. The visible spectrum, all of the visible light that we see fits in this narrow band right here. And you'll notice it looks like a rainbow. So Roy G. Biv, the fact that it goes red, orange, yellow, uh, blue, indigo, violet, right, green, I forgot in there. Uh, but those different colors, there's logic to that order, and it's based off of the wavelength and frequency of those lights. So you'll notice that the longer the wavelength, the no longer the wavelength, the more we shift towards red, but that corresponds to smaller frequencies. So sometimes you'll hear about something called a red shift or a blue shift, and that will be meaning that in a red shift, we're shifting towards longer wavelength and uh, smaller frequency, and in a blue sh shift, we're shifting towards shorter wavelength and larger frequency. So let's try some practice problems. I'm going to join you on your note guide to see if we can sort through some of these attributes of waves as well as light. And as you can see, my note guide has disappeared in terms of the practice problems, but that's perfect because we have some space to do them together. So we have a picture of a wave, and I can just sketch this in for us together again. And remember the different things that we're looking at on a wave. Looks a lot like a sine curve. So on our wave, we have said that the height from the middle of the wave to peak or to trough, we call this the amplitude, A. The distance from one place to where it repeats, this is the wavelength. And then frequency is how often it repeats. So think about, you have pictures on your note guide of which one of those has the longest wavelength. And if you look at the different waves that you see and which one would have the longest wavelength, the one with the longest wavelength is going to be wave A. Right? It has the longest distance from one place to another. Which one has the highest frequency? Well, which one repeats the most over a given time span, or in this case, a given distance? If you're careful and you're looking closely, you'll notice that both B and C both occur the same number of times over that distance. So they have the exact same frequency. And finally, which one would emit the brightest light? Remember, brightness corresponds to amplitude. And if you look, wave letters A, Wave letters A and B both have the same amplitude. So the fact that they both have the same amplitude on your note guide means that they are going to emit the, the same brightness of light. And one other, number two, that you see over there on the right-hand side of your note guide, 
which color is the most damaging? Well, most damaging is going to be the highest energy. And the highest energy that you see there is going to also be the highest frequency. So the highest frequency of visible light that we have is violet. So in the visible spectrum, violet would be the most damaging, and that's why you'll notice ultraviolet or UV is right above that. We often talk about wearing sunscreen to help block out those UV rays. All right, so let's get into the math problems, and this is a good place for me to just have some empty space and for you guys to do some work on your note guide. So number three says the yellow light given off by sodium vapor has a wavelength of 589 nanometers. What is the frequency of that radiation? So here are some things that we know about number three. Number one, we know that C equals lambda nu. And furthermore, we know the value of C, right? C is the speed of light. C has a value of 3.00 times 10 to the eight meters per second. We also know from the problem that we're given a wavelength. The wavelength is 589 nanometers, and remember, wavelength we denote with a symbol lambda. So lambda is 589 nanometers. We know the relationship between meters and nanometers. One meter is equal to one times 10 to the nine nanometers. So if you do that math, you'll get 5.89. times 10 to the minus 7 nanometers. And then we have our formula, and you'll notice we have a C. We also have a lambda. We're looking for nu. So let's do some work down here with nu. We can rearrange this equation. Right? If we want to rearrange this equation for nu, we would say that nu is equal to C over lambda. So now you can be really cool in the hallways. When someone says, what's new to you, you can respond C over lambda. All the cool kids do it. Um, but we can plug in what we have, right? So we have 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We have a wavelength, and our wavelength happens to be 5.89 times 10 to the minus 7. We just changed that into meters. Why did we change into meters? Because we need to cancel out with meters per second. And if you notice what's going to happen with our units, we're going to cancel out meters, and we're going to be left with seconds, but it's in the bottom of this fraction. It's going to be inverse seconds. And that's actually really good because we're solving for a frequency. So frequency, we want inverse seconds, also known as hertz, as our final unit. When you do this math, you will end up with 5.09 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds, also known as hertz. So the frequency of that light is 5.09 times 10 to the 14 hertz. All right, let's try again with number four. Number four says we have a frequency of a radio station. Perhaps you've listened to 105.9. That is definitely a frequency that we know in Pittsburgh, and we want to know what its wavelength is. So let's do that. Let's write down what we know. We know in number four, Again, that C is equal to lambda nu. We also know the speed of light. We know that C is equal to 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Right, That's a constant that's never going to change on us. We're given our frequency. Our frequency is 1 point, I'm sorry, 105. 0.9 megahertz. Megahertz sounds like the name of a new professional wrestler. Megahertz. And in order to use this, we need to convert it to hertz because this frequency is in hertz. It's an in inverse second, so we need to turn this into hertz. Let's do that really quickly. We know that mega is a prefix that means 10 to the 6, so 1 times 10 to the 6 hertz, hz, is equal to 1 megahertz. If you do that math, you will get 1.059 times 10 to the 8 hertz. We can rearrange our C equals lambda nu. This time we want lambda. So when we rearrange, we will get lambda is equal to C over nu. 
Fortunately, we have both of those. C is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. It's a constant. And our frequency we just said is 1.059 times 10 to the 8 hertz. But remember, what is a hertz? A hertz is actually an inverse second. So let's plug that in here. This is actually seconds to the minus 1, or seconds in the denominator. You have a seconds in the denominator up here, a seconds in the denominator down there. So those cancel. So you will figure out at the end of the day that you have a wavelength of 2.83 meters. And this is kind of crazy to think about, right? So you're listening to your radio and you're listening to 